in the end I decided to go down to four stitches remaining with six on each of my parking needles. Now, now to create the other side of the heel, we simply keep adding stitches to our heel area. So again, keeping the needles snug at the corners, we don't want loose gappy bits at the corners. We can knit until we reach the wrap stitch and then we will knit that stitch and borrow and wrap its neighbour and then repark it. So that stitch will have two wraps on it and if you look closely you can see the two pieces of yarn going around that stitch. And now I've got five on my central needle. Keep it snug at the corner. Work all of the stitches on that central needle until you get to the first wrap stitch. We're going to knit one wrap stitch, borrow, wrap, and repark the next door neighbour. And again, every time we embark on a right side row, we should still have the same number of wrap stitches on each needle. So I've got five here and five there. Don't forget this guy never changes colour. So he may not match the other ones on that needle. Each time at the end of the working needle, you knit one from the parking needle, borrow, wrap, and repark the neighbouring stitch. Keep going until there are two wrap stitches on either side. When you reach this point of two stitches on both of the parking needles, you should have a nice little cup shape for your heel and now we have two rows to go. This is I find the biggest stumbling block for most knitters in the first time they do this heel is they want to go further. So just remember when you've got two stitches, one that's double wrapped and one that's only single wrapped on the needle, you've got two more rows to go, a right side and a wrong side. corner snug, be gentle with that first stitch, so there's my last one on the working needle, there are my two part stitches, so I'm going to knit that one, borrow and wrap that one. And rather than putting him back on the parking needle, I'm just going to slip him to my right hand needle now. So I'm on my final row, it's a wrong side row. Knit one additional stitch borrow and wrap but there's nothing more we can do stop here replace the rest of your sock stitches back on the sock size needles and now you can continue working in the round where the sock yarn is caught with that first piece of um, heel yarn, just snuggle it up so it's not loose. Then with the yarn still draped around the throat of sti heel stitch number one, knit into that and make sure there's no gap between those two stitches. And now if you wish, you can knit the tail of the heel yarn in behind the work. Or this can be done with a darning needle later. 
you are now back in the round on your sock with the same number of stitches that you had before you made the heel without breaking off or interrupting your pattern sequence is with two wraps of yarn around its throat simply knit it and it blends right in with the background of your sock. And that's how neat your corner should be. When you pass the first corner of the heel for the second time, you can see the two wraps of yarn around that corner stitch. And that's what the first corner should look like. So, for example, this sock here, which is the mermaid sock, um, the stripe pattern of the background of the sock is totally unbroken by the insertion of a heel. We used a separate piece of yarn. We used the same yarn, but we used the other end of the ball. And you can see that this is a short row heel rather than knitted in the round because the stripes go shorter and shorter and shorter, longer and longer and longer. And it does produce an exceptionally neat corner on both sides. It takes a little practice, uh, but I think it's worth the effort. Here's another example. This sock here, again, had this lovely stripe pattern established in the sock and just about any other kind of heel would interrupt the stripe. So this heel, blends in because I use the opposite end of the yarn and does not upset the stripe pattern going on in the background of the sock. Next week we'll look at a further variation uh, if you wish to add more depth to the heel. It's actually deeper than it looks and because it's garter stitch you get a lot of vertical elasticity plus you have the thickness of garter stitch. It's a much more robust heel than a stocking stitch short row heel.